Welcome to Ejings by Editing and today we are going to have a discussion on a right to education. The fact that we all are aware of the I mean, necessity of providing education to one and all. India being the largest <coughs> democracy in the world. India is the largest <coughs> democracy in the world. Yes, so the population wise it is a challenge to provide an education to each and every I mean child and to make India 100% literate but the fact is that and the size of population of our country is so huge that the country cannot meet the demand of providing education to each and all yet the effort of the government as well as the state I mean policies education policy is to provide education to each and every child and under this, I mean, act in the year, you know, to, uh, 1950, the government of India, you know, uh, ensured the elementary and compulsory education to children up to age 14, up to which age? 14. And further, in the year 2009, right to education, RTE Act was enacted in India just to, I mean, make it compulsory that every child has a right to attend a school and get elementary free education. So to fulfill the demand of elementary and compulsory education, government of India has enacted right to education, right to education. Now, Ankit, you are going to talk about how do you think the present educational scenario of India differs from uh, the countries of the other, I mean, developed nations. So we are going to discuss how India is doing in the field of education as compared to the other developed countries and what are the changes that is required to bring about a substantial reformation in education policy and how we are going to do something better. Yes, carry on. Uh, as you said, sir, like the current uh, scenario of right to education system uh, in India, how it has been implemented and what's going on, uh, the current scenario. Uh, as we can uh, see, like you have already told us, like in 2004 and uh, in August, uh, sorry, in 2009. Okay? 2009, right, yeah. right to education yeah. was enacted. It was enacted. Yes. And in that act, it was uh, mentioned in bold letters that we have a right of uh, Every child has a right to attend and school. compulsary, compulsary. Uh, education. elementary education. Yeah, up to free and uh, I like, mean compulsary uh, yes, education. Sir. Yes, up to age fourteen. Yes. Uh, but uh, you see that has not been implemented uh, virtually. Like uh, virtually, you can say like uh, on the basis of records, it has been implemented. But if you look into the depths, or uh, even if, if you look at the current scenario, it's not well. There are many reasons of that. One of the major reason is child labor. Another is that discrimination of caste. Very good. Uh, and also uh, discrimination of gender. Good. Like many people, many people in rural areas, what they think is like uh, generally girls don't have a right to be educated. Because why? Because they already have a mindset that the girl will always, uh, after the age of 20, they'll already get married. However, the changes Cooks are coming yeah. in rural areas also. Yeah. People are sending the girls to uh, schools now. But the change is not substantial. It is no, very, very, I think, slow. very small. Yeah, yeah, very small and very slow. Nominally, it is not a yeah. very great change. And the main reason of that is because you see the teachers which are actually teaching in the schools are not that even qualified. Yeah, you're right. And also they ha don't have that uh, passion, you know. They Absolutely. are not that much dedicated towards their uh, Absolutely. Uh, duties. You know, uh, I have seen many teachers. They go, they mark their attendance. They come back without even like giving a proper set of education to the children. Right. And though they, they because uh, this happens because of the one single reason is that nobody is there to monitor them. And even if they are the person who are monitoring them on a small scale are even corrupted or they are even mixed with those group of the people. They all are trying to run away from their responsibility. And... Uh, if you see like uh, the teachers are well educated, well devoted and well passionate about the education system in India, about the education in government school, then you see there would be a great hike in the education system in India. And uh, also one of the main reason is that the discrimination still in many villages I have seen like uh, people are yet uh, discriminated. You know, the, this is a lower caste people. He can't sit with this people or that people, but it has been uh, written in bold letters sir, like freedom uh, it's free for and compulsory for everybody and everybody includes every caste religion everything sir even gender 
but still people are lacking in those areas we need to you know upgrade our mindset then only that education system could right. hike now one of the uh, areas uh, after the implementation of the right to education some changes came some non government organizations and ngos started working in this area and they took up some of the remote areas where education could not reach what they did was a uh, very encouraging you know some of the organizations you know took up they adopted some of the villages and they started teaching even the i mean children of the labor labor class farmers and some changes came in some of the states like in himachal pradesh in you know uttarakhand and in some of the i mean tribal areas like in jharkhand and odisha some non government organizations have taken up this challenge of imparting education to the poorest of the poor and uh, they have taken this i mean uh, work as a revolution as a change but the thing is that uh, unless the government supports them they cannot also meet the demand because the children who come under the poorest of the poor section they don't have books and copies they don't have any access to learning neither their parents are educated nor they themselves are eager to go to school so now the role of the you know state government uh, stands as a paramount importance ask how uh, awesome. the, the see the state government has got got a state education policy under that policy it is important to include those areas particularly the backward areas yes. where the tribal people stay and where there is no school so now it is the duty of the state government to construct schools and institutions with the help of the central government and provide i mean teachers there because central government will only give you the fund they can you know make you establish the schools but providing education is also under the state education policy yes, so now now there should be a correlation that's what i am thinking that the state government should work under the guidance of the central government and make sure that each and every village of the remotest tribal area should be uh, equipped with good schools am i right and roads because now there is no problem each and every village has got a road yes. so now the question of i mean commuting by the children poorest poor, poor children doesn't arise because they can reach any part of the i mean uh, corner of the state so the problem of commuting is not there but the question is that parents need to be encouraged now i am asking yes. question that government has started giving this i mean instruction to all the state i mean education policy makers that they should give education priority still there are three important hurdles that the state government faces the challenges lack of sufficient number of teaching staff yes. number one is that that government of india has already underlined the need of um, a large number of teachers in state government schools private schools as well as in central government run schools but the question arises the hrd department human resource development has to make sure that the number the ratio of the teacher and his student must be appropriate must be Definitely. and this is the policy of the ed but the government must make sure and incorporate the policy of providing sufficient number of staff teaching staff well trained staff and well equipped staff because if the if staffs are not qualified how can you expect can better education teach? second thing motivating the parents to send the children to, to school. school as you rightly said that there are many i mean villages where the people don't send their girls to school because they think that the girls are meant for doing house jobs so but the change has come up now you just see it. in rural areas and semi urban areas what are those changes you elaborate what are those changes see uh, you rightly said sir uh, that uh, there are been progress there has been progress and there are been changes but you see those changes are very slow yeah yeah and but they are happening and like government also is trying it's uh, hard uh, for uh, changes as you see uh, you told like uh, parents need to be encouraged yes. for that uh, government is making uh, new new uh, offers making um, you know a meal system in uh, yeah yeah compulsory meal is being yeah. given to the children those who are attending school they are being fed with uh, compulsory food every day yeah, so and not only that mm. free books free copies, copies. free notebooks and free bag everything is being provided bicycles are being provided by yes, the sir. state government if all the facility is yet the dropouts numbers are increasing so that means there is a need to create awareness awareness now how can you create awareness that is the question that you have to elaborate on 
how can we create awareness among the parents as well as the people of the villages to send their children to school because unless the children are at a school who are you going to teach you are not going to teach the uh, you know wall of the school you are going to teach the, the ch children <laughs> so the question is that an awareness program has to run around the year and pro particularly from the remotest village to the urban areas so that not a single child should be left out from getting proper education. education. So for that, what are your suggestions? See, uh, one of the major hurdles that uh, government is facing is that the, uh, the parents are not encouraged. What, what is the ma uh, mindset of the people around the rural area is that if I send my children to the school, I will have more liabilities. You know, I have to buy them books, copies. You know, uh, there are many cases of child labor. That yes, child, child labor is, is one of the biggest yeah, problem because the child because itself is earning and giving the yes, and they are working in the farm and they are earning yes, money. Sir. And so they think that more children, more income. Yes, sir. They are not thinking in terms of educating them yeah. and giving them quality of life. So for that, what what suggestions? Are what what we doing? could do is like uh, what government should do is like they should hire few counselors that those can you know uh, go around the villages, every houses. Particularly make, the village workers, yeah, sir. because they they only have interaction with the villagers. Yeah. they know their language. They can convince them. The look, government is giving more. Sure yeah, yeah. If they are educated, they will get better quality of life. They will get job. Yeah, they, they will, will get better living. And even if the parents' uh, living standard would be increased, if the child is having a good education system and is doing good in life, right. And also those counselors should what they should do is like they should assure their parents that if you're ch sending your child to the school, it's not like uh, your liability is increasing. It's something like it's becoming an ace for you in your old age. Do you think the number of government schools that is that we are having in each and every state that is are they sufficient no, for sir. accommodating those children? No. Uh, if not, then what should be done? Yeah, see, uh, there are many. Uh, for uh, uh, example, in my village itself, there is just one single government school. Not even a public school is there. And that government school is also, you know, uh, not well. Uh, it doesn't have a good infrastructure. Walls are uh, breaking down, not proper blackboards. So no, why way. can't we incorporate the public schools which are running yeah. side by? We should, I mean, entrust responsibility to public school on the on behalf of government. It should be made compulsory that public schools in those area should also take up the responsibility of providing Definitely. education to the poorest of the poor. Yeah. Like in DPS, you know, in Bukaro. They have got As Asa Deep a school, yeah, separate right. school. In in Chinmay also they have got children. I mean poor from poor section, a yes, separate sir. section. That's what so, I was saying. So so the responsibility of the public school is also important. Important. They yeah. should take up the responsibility of bringing those children to the school and giving them education without discriminating them, without I mean keeping them separate because they are also part of the society. Part of the society. Yes. Unless we think of the last man on these. I mean, earth, how can really build up a good nation? So, you know, government of India is doing a lot. But the thing is that... It's not reaching yeah, the it's not properly. Reaching the, there is a communication gap. Yeah. The state government should have a proper, I mean, I mean, interaction with the central government. And they should work on the guidelines given by HRD. Human Development, the Ministry of HRD has already given a guideline that the state government can directly write to the director of education and get the demand fulfilled. For that, it is the duty of the state government to publish the number of vacancies for teachers, am I right? Definitely, and sir. fulfill them. And, and even the, check their, you know, education qualification. Yes. Because there are many fraud cases where the yes, teachers sir. are not that eligible yes, to sir. teach. You're right. And yet they are teaching in that school. And uh, I have even seen like in many uh, videos also in YouTube, yes, yes. there are people who doesn't even know who is the Prime Minister of India. Right, they are right. teaching in school. Yeah, in, in Bihar and uh, yes, other, What other will places? they teach in school but if yeah. the teacher itself is not knowing what to teach? So that, that is, uh, that comes under the state education policy. Yes, sir. So the state education policy need to be, I mean, uh, briefed that they should always concentrate on quality teachers. Quality, apart from them, there is a big challenge, Anki, that our country is facing. One of the problems that, that has come out, that the children are not, I mean, as interested to attend school as they are interested in play. What do you think is the reason? One of the main reasons is that the people, uh, backward people or the people in rural areas, actually fear education you know they think uh, uh, they you know keep a distance from education the main reason is that they have been playing for 24 hours a day like whatever the time get, they get they play they work whatever they do they don't try they don't keep their mind itself here what we could do in school is like we can allot them their games period you know have interaction with the um, 
स्टूडेंट इन मेनी पब्लिक स्कूल यू हैव सीन सर ऑलमोस्ट लाइक देर आर वीडियो थ्रू वीडियो दे टीच यू नो दीज थिंग्स रेस्ट्रिक्टेड नाउ अप टू क्लास टू the weight of the bag should be only 2 kg yes, they sir. should not be i mean compelled to carry 6 books 10 books yes, because now up to class 2 uh, the government has already planned that the children should be given playful way of teaching yeah. that means they are playing and they are learning and there is nothing like text book uh, in 1 and 2 most of the teaching should be oral it should not be written yeah. and most of the things should be for of bringing the child's mindset and proper growth of the child the fit, physical fitness the mental alertness that will come only when a child is being given the opportunity to understand the importance of childhood like a 5 year 6 year old child should not be given a load of 6 kg of book that is unscientific yeah he he will be scared he will yeah. be feared like yeah that's the reason second thing that the tribal people who are not at all i mean aware that what is education and how it is important they need to be brought under the light that education to them is more important than educating others because they are the backbone of the society Definitely. the poorest of the poor if they are not educated you cannot expect a democracy to be stronger so we need to make a plan that the education should reach each and every corner of the country for that it is important that we spread the message of like in you know we have swachh india you know uh, clean india campaign in the same way educating all is a campaign it need to be made aware and it need to be delivered like spread properly yeah, and delivered properly or made a spreading awareness program is more important so if a tribal person i mean if you understands that doing work in the field is important it is also equally important to send the child to school isn't it yes, so this has to be done now third major problem that that has recently crop up that our education system up to a high school is not as scientific as the developed countries for example children who are getting bookish knowledge they are not having any skill at the school level when they, when they go to college they you know they get you know technical education and before college they have no idea about technical education so can't we make a change in the education policy and add at least part of the education school education as vocational training vocational yes, job training if a child is good at music let him be given one hour training to music let him develop music that is nothing wrong yes, if sir. a child is talented in drawing let him be trained one hour or two hours every day in drawing and painting because he could be a good artist he could be good craftsman am i right if a child is good at sports ball or a girl he should be separately put to training in sports am i right definitely that's sir. what i am saying that the school education need to be provided yes. with vocational training vocational job training skill development skill so that when they grow up when they enter the college they should be capable of getting a job getting a job and that is what is needed there is no need of separate polytechnic let the schools be incorporated with all the polytechnics all the technical institutions let the engineering college student come to school and and guide the children guide that look you have to learn how to assemble a transistor how to assemble a computer set how to make a small i mean a cell phone so let the children also learn assembling of the electronic tools am i right like yes, in sir, japan it is a, let the children learn the art of painting and drawing and crafts let the children know how thread is to be made into cloth am i right let the children know the clothing system clothing then only i think the education will be more meaningful am i right yes, sir. and to conclude you just tell what are the three things that immediately the government should do one of the major thing is that they need to uh, make people aware awareness is very awareness important. is very important second thing, another thing is like they need to look out for the teachers you know they are not qualified quality enough. teachers i mean yeah. there is sufficient teachers. number of teachers must be there at the school and third important thing a major change has to be brought in the education don't system, you think sir? that the parents are the stakeholders stakeholders yes, so they Definitely. should also become a part of school Definitely. let all the parents of all the i mean schools running village and panchayat be made the stakeholders yeah. let them be included in the ptm i mean uh, association yeah. and let them be allowed to monitor the task of running the school let the panchayat look into what is going on in school let a responsible i mean person of the village be given the i mean charge of looking out the progress of the school am i right yes sir so Generally, let the school be brought 
to the grassroots level of the democratic system and let the education be given the priority by the government. Am I right? Yes, yes. Thus, we conclude that education in India has to be taken on priority on okay, and most you. important aspect of democratic system. Am I right? Yes. Then only we can expect India to be better. better. Thank you very much.